Hi, Joe here over at Woolly Cottage on the Cumbrian coast, overcast to cloudy. It's Wednesday afternoon. Um, had a busy couple of days, so I thought, well, I've got an afternoon peace and quiet and I'm not doing any fluffing upstairs, I thought I'd do some fluffing today. So, at the weekend I did a live chat and I do apologise that I've not been able to upload it onto my YouTube channel. For some reason, Instagram wouldn't allow me to download onto my phone. Um, but if you do want to watch it and you've missed it, go over to my Instagram account and you'll see it in my profile page uh, for Saturday's Coffee Break live chat. It's on there and you can watch it whenever you feel like it. So we end up getting onto the topic of felting projects because I'd done a felted um, wreath of pumpkins that I got from a producer that I love to buy my felting kits from it when I get the chance to, which isn't often, but I, only, I generally like to stick to the same person because I feel like I'm supporting them um, and I just know that her kit's definitely worth the money. So I end up being asked to show a couple of items that I've made myself and excuse the look of her, Erin is actually quite a, an unusual creature. She is actually a elf witch. So she has got a green face and she's got pink in there and everything else and it was one of the very first um, felting projects I ever did. I know a challenge for a first timer but it's one of the ones I did and it's got a variety of different techniques in there. I've got adding textures and ribbons to her. She's got a sari silk vest on there as well, moccasin boots. She's got her own scarf and her hair's made from locks with more textured ribbons in there and she's got a welt, fed, a welt oh God, a wet felted coat that she wears. So I'll just take it off and one of the ladies commented that she, she's got a landscaping kit at home that she had bought for her by some friends and that she's never built up the courage to, uh, to do any wet felting. So I'll just stick her down for the time being. So there she is with her little jeans on and she's got ivy and flowers going up her trousers. So she's got her own little embellishments going on and her big booty. I'll just pluck her over there. Oh, and she moves as well. She's She's a wired doll and even her head moves around and she usually sits on top of my kitchen shelf. So, right, I'll go put her down. So her jacket was the first example I ever did of wet felting. Now this is a, more of a pre-felt than it is a wet felt because I could just ever so slightly pull the fibres but it's felted to a point that I could easily cut that up and sew it or whatever and she's got silk hankies on there um, she's got Angelina in what else is on there there's some locks in there and there's some tussa silk as well um, and there's some locks on the ends of it there so I was asked if I could do some wet felting and I thought right okay I will go and have a rummage around through my bats upstairs that I've got my sash that I usually do recycling with now you can this has got no backing on it, it's got no pre-felting in there, it's literally just a bat felted. But what I thought I would do today is do an example of um, layering on a felted backing. And this here, there's only one I could find. You know, I know I've got blue and a grey somewhere upstairs, but this is just your basic um, merino pre-felt. I think it's, it's a 22 micron and it's roughly about two to three millimetres thick. So that's how big it is and that's a 50 by 50 centimetres and that's generally how the size that you get them pre-cut. I'll leave a couple of links below as to where you can buy them. Um, so you've got World of Will, you've got Adelaide Walker, um, I think Wing and Will Warehouse does them as well and there's a couple of independent felting companies out there. If you go onto one of the fel uh, felting Facebook groups pages you'll find a couple of people on there that do them as well. So I'm literally, I don't want it too big, so I want it so that I can, once I finish felting, I want to either cut them into different, cut these into different sections, make bookmarks out of them to gift out, or maybe even do some sort of garland on there. Not quite made up my mind yet. I might even use a swatch where I can actually um, put them in photo frames and stitch on and things like that and embellish them with stitching and embroidery but that's a future, pro future project so I'm just literally going to cut a large swatch of pre-felt out and hopefully 
it will fit on the materials that I've got. If I have to cut it down a bit more, I will do. And yes, you could say, I could have done all this before I come on, but at the end of the day, this is something that you can sit and follow me along at the same time, which is what I've done when I used to watch felting videos, is just sort of follow along with everybody else. So it's not quite square, it is rectangular. So I'm gonna go with that direction, I think. So the stuff, the equipments that you need, you want some decent bubble wrap. The thicker the bubble wrap, the more agitation that you're gonna get from your fiber, um, in the process of fiber, um, agitating the fibers together to felt together. And then you're gonna want, so I've got different thicknesses here in my bag of felting stuff. So I always keep my bubble wraps when they arrive in parcels and orders. So you've got a really, really small, fine bubble wrap here, which is great if you're using a finer, marie, a finer wool that will felt really easily. But I'm using mixed fibres, so I've got mixtures of Corridales and Shetland and Merinos in my fibre bat that I'm going to use for doing this today. Um, so I've gone for a bit more of a harsher bubble, which should give it a more a tougher working um, reaction, agitation. You can use a small sanding mouse, and I might do that in another video at some other point to demonstrate. Then you want some plastic. Now, I'm just gonna take the rest of this out of here. So you want some plastic as well. Now, you don't have to have plastic if you haven't got any, don't worry, because alternatively, just use some organza, um, some netting, now polyester will not felt, so you, if you've got old netting somewhere in your cupboard or some tool, um, use some of that. Alternatively, these old pack, packing bags, just cut off where the plastic seal is at the top. I can never find any more, uh, any thinner plastic than this. I have considered using cling film, but you know what cling film is like, it sticks to itself and as soon as you've taken it off the roll. So literally just cut off your end where the seal is and then cut down the side cut down the bottom and there you have a piece of plastic sheeting everyone's got plastic plastic bags somewhere around in the house. I mean, nothing to say that you can't use, you know those really, really thin plastic bags that you get from those German supermarkets. Um, use one of those. It's not gonna stop, it's not gonna um, stop you being able to do what you're doing. So you wanna lie that under there. Actually, do you know what I'm thinking? I'm gonna make this project smaller. So I'm just gonna cut that into a proper little square. At the end of the day, my felting's not going to go to waste. I can always do something else with it. So I'm just thinking less is more. So I'll cut that to one side. And then we've got a piece of felting. And I'm going to turn it landscape wise and put it down on the table. And then what else do you want? You want some organza or tool or some netting. So my pieces, you know, today I've been searching everywhere for my large pieces of tule and I can't find it anywhere. So what I'm going to do is use both the small pieces that I've got and just lay them on top of my work when I'm doing it. So I'm just going to stick them to one side at the moment. And then you want to get yourself some olive oil soap. Now you can buy olive oil soap in a block or you can buy it in like a powdery consistency. Um, World of Will do it in the powder form. I don't think I've ever noticed it anywhere else in a powder form. And you can literally just sprinkle that into a gun with warm water um, or into your bowl. I prefer to use the block um, so I can just put it directly straight onto my hands. So the next part is to start thinking about layering and how I want it to go. So if you're using a technique where you're pulling the, the fibre from a roving. Now we're doing mine from a back, but I'm just going to give you an example. Hold on a minute. That's silk. I don't want that one. We'll use this. This is a red, black merino. So it's in its ro uh, roving form. And you want to 
just pull yourself off a strand and then when you get it you want to hold the end and draft it out okay so I'm going to tilt you down a little bit there you go so you want to draft it down so you're going to place it on your backing if you've got that that's come in your kit and again grip it like that and just pull your strands out and layer it across the top of that and keep going now this technique going like this is called shillying it's like shillies shingles on a on a rooftop and a bit more and just keep layering it bit by bit all the way along so you do that consistently layer that across there and just keep going until you build up your section now I will do this at a later date showing you how I do making vessels with um, a a mould and that's this is the technique that you use so once you've got your light your first layering down you want to then create a top layer so you can go on a diagonal and you can go up and down so just literally pull that over and place it on top I'll take another piece and I'll do it over this side so you can see what I'm doing so just pull my strands and place over the top in the opposite direction to the way I've gone already and you don't want you don't really need a big thick layer you want if you're using the pre felt in the back you want to really stick to a couple of layers on the top because the more the thicker the wool at uh, the layering is the heart the longer it's going to take you to felt it so I would literally just build up my layers like this so that's me got my skin layer on top of pre felting and then I would embellish on top of that and you want to make sure as well that you've got no bold patches poking through if you do just build up your texture and that's generally how you do your layering out but that's not what I'm doing today well I'm going to be using some of this in a bit but I want to use my bat as a back blend so I'm just going to roll this up because I can use that in a bit to darken down so what have I got I have got locks then the tees water locks I brought some of those down I've brought myself some Angelina down sorry but this light seems to be awful bright let's see if I can calm it down a little it's very dull today so I didn't want I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it's about daylight sort of look yeah it's very very dark and overcast today so this house gets really dark really quickly so yeah so I've got some Angelina now Angelina won't stick but it will adhere in between the fibres and I have got a bat here that I'm going to sort out and divide through I've also brought down some mulberry silk in case I feel like I want something shiny on there and I have got some merino glitz in case I decide I don't want to use the Angelina I've brought down some black and white wool nips and some more glitz and this um, merino blend okay so that's all the fibers that I've got oh I've brought down with me it's stuff I've hunted out so what I'm gonna do first is get my bat and I'm going to have a look at the back of it, not the front of it at the moment. See? And I'm going to peel off. Because of the layering, I can actually peel off in different sections to get different colours. And this is what my landscape felters do when they receive my bats. Is they divide them up. So they've got hints and tips, of, hints and bits of colours in different varieties. So that they can build up on that. There we go, so that's oh, that's one layer taken off straight away. So there's bits of purple, there's probably another layer in there between, yes there is, so I can pull that layer out as well. And the thinner the layers, the more you can build up the colours. So I'm just going to 
peel away this purple from this damson. There we go, nearly there. There we go. So I shall just, we've ended up like a cobweb of fibre. So I'm just going to plonk that to one side. Now, can I divide this anymore? I probably could, but I quite like the way that's looking at the moment. So I'm just going to stick that to one side as well. Okay, so with that, I have got some green and some mulberry on my next layer. So I'm going to take that one off. And it leaves behind purples and nearly my top layer. So I'm just going to carefully roll that off there we go so that's teals and damson in that one so what you've ended up with is really really thin layers of carded fibres. So just for those, teal and damson, fuchsia and purple, and then a little bit of damson on its own, you've, you've created yourself at least two other projects of worth of fibres. And then this one here at the very end, these light purples, I'm going to skim off my toppings layer where all my silks and that are. Underneath here will be now a purple layer with a lilac. And I'm taking off, well it's actually raspberry with lilac with some greens in there. And the top layer has ended up being a deep purple with teal. Oh, just take that off. So there's the top layer off. And technically that's two different colour bands. So take that off and put that to one side. And I'm left with hints of, I've got lilac on one side with hints of olive mulberry silk in there and fuchsia on the other side. So already just from one bat I've created one two three call it four and a little bit four really thin layers of fiber that I can card straight away well not card straight away I can wet felt straight away so what do I want to go with I think in my mind's eye I'm thinking of a night sky so I'm going to get this one here with the purple and the fuchsia and I'm going to layer this actually she'll turn it over the other way yes yeah, so it's more purple I'm gonna layer that now you want to try and make sure that you end up with fibers that aren't too thick in places and that you really don't have any bold spots but these bold spots are going to get covered up so I'm going to take that off now where my rough end is there at the bottom I'm going to just gently peel this off. Don't worry if your wool's hanging off the edge. That's fine, it's not a problem. If you want it perfect, you can always sort that out afterwards because of the shrinkage. So next I want to just get some of this teal and damson. And I think I'm gonna layer it in the opposite direction and thin it out really thin it out just to build up some extra colours extra colours and depth of field in this wet felt in there we go so I've still got some little bits of yellows coming through which I'm quite happy about I don't mind now I don't think I'm going to use any of these bats again. I think next I'm going to get those bits 
of black and I'm going to layer them in a wispy way all the way along to create like a night sky. So I'm just pulling off the ones that I'd used earlier on. Do some more. I'm going to add some Angelina in there before I get any further on with my layering. Now you don't need a lot of Angelina. It won't adhere to your, your project. It won't stick to it. You may find that it comes out hairy in places. Just trim them off later on. It isn't a problem. All right, so I'm just gonna add some more of this merino on the top. Darken down some more areas over here, and you can just pull and place that on there. Just place them in the opposite direction to the wool that I've already put down, and then I'm going to use a little bit of this merino glitz. Not a lot, don't need a lot. I just want to create some sort of thought of some wispy skyline clouds going through as it does in the night sky. And then I think I'll add in some little bits of nets. Now, not all your nets will adhere. Some will, majority of them will. But as long as you stick to some woolen nets, you should be fine. Take some of these in this clump here and put them over here. Okay, now, do I want to add some blue silk? I think I might add a little bit, just for a little drama. If I can, there we go. Put them down here in the bottom. angles. Uh, do I want to add some locks? Do I? Okay, so I'm going to put in some locks. Just put them just wherever. don't want musty pink, I want some bright pinks. So I'll have them like that. Some shooting up, like, like fire, uh, fireworks. If that's the case, let's see if I can find some orange. Oh. Um, 
one more. more than enough you generally want to stick to th three layers at the maximum uh, three four layers of fibers because as I say the, the more fibers you add the longer it's going to take to actually um, work your fibers and agitate them together so this is probably quite busy looking but I'm just having a bit of fun really at the end of the day and I may use it as a picture on its own I may cut it up into little items and bookmarks. I'm just going to trim down the bottom here because it's definitely poking out a little bit more than I want it to. Oh, there we go. So I think I've ended up with two layers of batting to um, pre felt on the bottom, and then I've split really thin layers of my art bat. So Technically it counts as one, but it is actually two. And then I've done two layers of with the merino and the extra toppings on top. So it's roughly about four layers of fibre. So you want to keep it as an even number. So next I want to get my you can call it your tool, you can call it organza or your netting, and I want to just now you want warm water to do this, but I'm just going to soak down and start wetting through. Into my wool and it's lay on top. I've got it on top of my plastic sheeting on top of my bubble wrap. And on top of some towels. So you just want to soak it through and then we'll start working it in a bit. And it'll all start going into, the, into one layer and it will start thinning down. So don't worry if it seems lumpy and bumpy in places. Once you get, so you get your gun and start layering up the water amounts get that in there you want to give it a real good soak I'm going to move these wheels out of my way before I get them all completely drenched move this up a little bit right and now I'm just going to put some soap on my hands and I'm just going to very gently, like you're rubbing a baby's bottom, start working in the soap in my hands. I'm just going to move this out of the way. And you just want to build up your moisture on your will so you can start working it and agitating it with your hands. I'm going to add just some more water to that. This is warmer than that water in there. want it so you've got water pouring out all over the place but you want it so the water because it's got wool in there and everything else your wool really needs to be wet otherwise this is not going to work just to get some soap on my hands. I 
Now you just very gently start working in the soap into the wool. And you don't want to do this hard. You want to do this like you're, as I say, like, like you're washing a baby's bottom. The lightest touch, but it's enough to cause aggravation on your project. And you want to go up and down all the way across it. going up and down around in circles So you'll see the fibres are all flattening down now. There's still some work to be done, but if you just give it a peel back every so often, you can see what's happening underneath. So you carry on with that. I'm just going to go and top up my bowl with some more hot water and then I can give it a bit more soaking, some more sods so it can start working. Okay, so once you've got to this stage now, I've been just agitating with my fingers for the last 10-15 minutes. So now we should be able to just peel that off without that, that really resisting to the top of my fibres, uh, to the top of this organza. So apart from the odd little bit. But that is looking quite good to me. Is it starting to felt to the back end? Yes, it has started felted felt into the back in so that's even better so now we're on the next stage so what I'm going to do is move my wool uh, sorry my soap and my, my water out of the way because I don't need that anymore move bits and pieces that are just going to get next, in the way just tie up my workspace this plastic sort of flipped over the top of there as much as possible I'll be fine it doesn't really matter too much I don't want the wool to fold over let me see if I can just align this plastic up a little bit more without just destroying it. I'm just going to straighten that out a bit more. I flip that over and then I'm going to use the bubble wrap and I have got 
this piece of foam in. Now this one's hollow, you can get them with a thicker. This is all I've got. This is just a piece of um, piping covering insulation foam. So I'm just gonna wrap that around there and roll that up. Now this is the process that will take for ages. It takes a lot of uh, <laughs> muscle power. And then I'm gonna roll my towel up in it as well. Okay, so I've rolled it a little bit. Now I want to roll it 25 times on each quarter. Okay, so what I wanna do, so that's, that's that on the side. So I've literally just got my towel and I've plonked it there like that. So now I wanna work 25. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and turn a bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and turn again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And one more turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Whew. Right, so t roll back your towel and you want to turn your work on the four sides. So I'm just going to unravel my work. I don't know how that's handed up all the way on the other side. Weird. Oh, what's going on? Right, okay. So I started off there, I'm up there now. So what I want to do is bring this down, flip that plastic back under there. And I'm gonna work this side up now, center it up. So you want to make sure that every way, so that was my bottom, now I'm doing from my right up to the left and I'll turn it again so I'll be doing the top all the way around turn it around one more time and I'll be doing this top side next okay so I literally want to roll it up put the towel over the top and again do the exact same thing 25 turns turn it a bit, 25 turns, turn it a bit, 25 turns, turn it a bit, 25 turns, turn it a bit. So that's 100. So I'm just going to let this bit fast forward now, okay? You've done that four times, 20, 100 times of each, on every 25 count, turn a little, and then eventually what you do is end up felting the entire roll as you're doing it. So then it's the next stage. Now you want to flip it over. Okay? So your backing becomes 
the bit that this sits on and you can repeat the entire process all over again. So a hundred times on four corners. I promise you won't need to exercise again for another week. Okay, so this technique is called the rock and roll and um, it just it's a technique that's used it's, it's supposed to be really easy to be able to do because literally all you're doing is rock and rolling it does hurt my hands but then I have got fibromyalgia and I've got issues going on with my muscles in my arms and I can feel my shoulders but if you're someone that does this quite a lot you do build up your muscle strength and the um, the memory, the muscle memory that you're using all the time. So eventually after a while, it doesn't become that sore. And you're able to do it a lot more often. But really, I mean, I've been doing this for the past oh, 15, 20 minutes now, and I'm just going on to my very last um, 100 rolls. So what I'm doing when I'm doing, when I'm turning the clockwise, is I'm placing the tube, which is usually facing me, up along the side. So it means that I know I've already done this side, I know I've done that side, I know I've done that side, so this is the very last side that I need to do, and that's now facing me. So if every time that you do a roll, you place your tube, your, your roll, so it's facing away from you, it means that that bottom end is the section you haven't done. Alternatively, if you've got any stickers or a Sharpie marker, who's to say that you don't put a little like um, line here saying start? So technically, the line would be over here, once you've got to this point, which is my last roll of 100s, if you catch my drift. But to place your roll there, take your towel off, move it back towards you, and if I was to roll that, like, if I was to roll that up now, do my 100, when I came back again, that would be rolled around, that would be back over there, and this bit that was on that side is now facing in front of me. So that creates your clockwise. So as long as you remember that you've got to do each side of those, four times you cracked it okay so I just need to roll this up because it's the last time I'm going to be doing this with the bubble wrap get it in my towel my hands are just about thankful so I'll quickly just go into the last bit of this and I will film it <laughs> So I'm going to take this plastic sheet away from it for the moment. I'm going to flip it over and it has really shrunk a lot now. So that's what it looks like. So there's the bottom I started off with and it's definitely shrunk about 10-15% but this has got mixed fibres in it. It doesn't have, um, it's not all merino. Uh, there's bits of merino on there. The finer the wool, the more shrinkage that you will get from it. So if you were to do this with, say, an 18 count merino, you would probably see anywhere between 50 to 30% shrinkage on your actual wet felting. But this has got Shetland in it and Corridale as well as the merino that you see me add in afterwards. So this is what it's looking like at the moment. The bits of Angelina still stuck in there. It's quite heavy. So next, I still need to do the filling section side of it. So I mean, I could technically 
just roll it up take it off the plastic and just roll it and that gets it filling and f uh, felting together all you're doing when you're filling is just making sure that the f any fibers are in there are all agitated alternatively if you're able to get yourself some old bamboo mats now the smaller your mat the smaller your project's going to be i have got one here so i'm just going to put my plastic on it and i'm going to put my felting on it like that it's just about the right size and this is what i'm going to use for filling i've still got some locks that aren't quite ready there they're sticking out but i don't mind because at the end of the day, as I've said, I'm just having a little mess around. And this will do the exact same thing. It'll agitate the fibres in together because of the bamboo striations. I don't have any like moulds. Uh, there's the hand rubbers and things like that or a ratchet board. Um, I don't have anything like that, but this works the same way is one of those rigid um, wooden blocks, felting blocks that you can buy. It works exactly the same principle. I'm gonna stick this bubble wrap over the top of this. I'm really quite paranoid about my wool. So I'm just gonna use this to agitate a bit more, make sure all the wool's felting in together. Gonna flip it around so it ends up with even, even as possible. And this just helps with the filling process. Cause all you're doing is making sure that it's completely compacted. There's nothing loose in there. Um, you're helping felt all the fibres together with the frictions just a bit more rougher. Now, if you were using, say, very fine fibres with silks, you don't have to be as harsh. You could literally just fill it with your fingers until you can see there's definitely no more shrinkage in that wool. So did you know that wet felting as a human textile has been in existence for thousands of years. There's actually tombs in Siberia um, that they found not just clothing, horse blankets and jewellery with um, symbolic, that we use for symbolic tokens of good luck and things like that, found in the cave in Siberia. And they're dated from at least five to eight thousand years ago and they've all been intricately embellished with hand stitching from plant plant dyed fibers and wools and that the nomadic people the mongolian people would use them and still use them to this day with felted cladding um, insulation and tents for their urts so it's something that we've always used it's probably one of the oldest fibres known to man and we use them for felting and insulating in our shoes and socks and things so I think that's about as filled as it's going to get I might just give it another few of those sheets out the way just roll that up
So you could go on with this a little bit longer and I might do afterwards and I'm going to go and let it dry in front of the fire now. So that's that so far. I need to go and throttle a cat, I can hear him scratching at the sofa, which he never ever does. So I'll show this and the dried result of it on Saturday on my live chat. Um, but if you're looking for any um, smaller mini bats, if you want to have a little try of wet felting, just give me a shout. I can make them up in any colourways that you want. I do have a couple of packs of uh, mini bats on my website already. Maybe only one left at the moment. I think that's these colour themes that I have. But I'm quite happy to sort some out. Um, you just let me know. Custom orders are more than welcome. Um, so yeah, that's me just about finished. Just need to let it dry. I'll probably fill it a little bit more and have a couple more. So I'll just have a with it. couple more moments with it, I think, on the bamboo mat. It's going to be a bit more time, probably a bit more bashing around. There's still quite a bit of moisture in there. So that's how the backing looks and you can see it's definitely felted in place. There's no separation of that at all. Very heavy. I might I might actually have a wander down the, the, um, the beach and see if I can find some driftwood and maybe hang it from there. I think I might do that. Could look nice up on my walls in here. So I think I might do that instead of cutting up into pieces. But as I say, the locks aren't sticking down completely but who said I don't do some applique on there and add um, some stitching and things like that on it but I'll leave it to dry and see how it goes and I'll show it off on Saturday hopefully I'll be able to save my video on Saturday it's so annoying that I couldn't do it last weekend um, so yeah so if you'd like me to do any future content of wet felt in, in the future uh, future content in the future if you'd like me to do some more wet felting or some beginners um, needle felting or projects or anything like that just give me a shout I'm more than welcome, I'm more than happy to do it. I would like to show you how I do my wet felt in vessels. Um, they're quite simple to do. Same principle as what we're doing now, but you just put, um, it's two layers with an insert in the middle of it, like a mould. Um, and then you felt them together and cut a little holes in the tops and then turn them inside out and fill it together. And that's really all I need to do with this now, is literally just fill it. So I just need to roll it up a couple more times. Just give it a couple more rubs. I would say probably another 25 times on each type of thing. Just keep going like that just to get those fibres completely done in there. And then again that way. Roll it up. And that's really all you want to do when you're filling it. But it's the same principle when I'm doing my felted bowls as well and felted vessels. I mean, I could have embellished it a bit more, but I'm actually quite limited to what supplies I've got around at the moment. I've not even got any silk hankies and I've usually got some of those in for when I'm messing around to do bits and pieces. But it'd probably shrink a little bit more if I did a bit more filling to it. But I'm quite happy with the way that's looking at the moment. As I say, drop some comments below of any future content that you'd like me to do, any questions you want to ask. I'm open to anything. If there's anything you'd like me to film in the future, let me know. Again, I'm quite happy to do them. I'll put them in the planning. Um, hopefully, live, time, uh, live chat on Saturday lunchtime on Instagram, I will try my best to get it saved and downloaded onto my YouTube channel. If you can't find it on here, you'll definitely find it on my Instagram account um, or a link to it on my my Facebook page. Um, so yeah, I hope that was useful, um, especially for you beginners that asked you for me to do this so you can figure out what it is you're supposed to do. Though there's loads of YouTube videos. Um, best one to look for is Living Felts. And if you go on to, hold on a second, they do lots of school, they've got a school, an online school, and they have lots of free videos on there as well. And if you look up, I've written, I wrote it down, um, feltingtutorials.com, and it's by Living Felts. They're in Austin in Texas. It's actually a warehouse, so, um, a felting fiber um, company, small company, uh, run by a lovely lady and her, her fairies. So you can go on there and find um, loads of lessons that you might not be able to access on YouTube. Um, but definitely go looking on YouTube for her. You will find her on there. Really good. Loads of tutorials. Where I started off. Um, yeah, so that's the best advice I can give you. If you want any books, give me a shout. I'll give you a link. I will um, pass on links or information for really good books to get started with as well. So you take care of yourselves. See you next week.